Well, good afternoon to those of you in New York, and good evening and good morning for those of you in other areas around the world. This is the first of our new sessions on staying safer during uh, your family at home times. We are working, we are trying to teach our children, we're banking, we're talking to our doctors and psychiatrists and uh, people who matter. We're talking about business secrets. We are doing all of the things that we normally would do offline and in person. And now we're doing them online and crossing our fingers and hoping that the networks like Zoom are more credible than apparently they are. And there are lots of things that we need to do and can do. So uh, you may know me as the cyber lawyer and a digital privacy and security lawyer, and that's cool. But when it comes to trying to set up devices and figure out how to make my routers work, I go to the outsiders who really know what they're doing. And I, I told Ryan, I'll introduce him in just a second, that whenever my router doesn't work, I just throw it out and get a new one. Um, so all of us are challenged when it comes to these things. And the best thing about this guest, I'm bringing him in right now, Ryan Clodier is um, a good friend. He's part of my leadership council at the Cyber Safety Group because he knows a lot, especially about cybersecurity in schools and uh, large networks and practical issues and making sure that those are fixed. So he's one of my go-to people when I can't make things work. And I thought we'd go to him together to figure out this router issue. Um, so how do we make ourselves more secure while we're home? So Ryan, first introduce yourself a little bit. Well, thanks so much for having me on, Perry. Um, as she mentioned, my name is Ryan Clotier. Um, I'm a CISSP. Um, and for those that don't know, that, that just means I have the uh, one of the toughest licenses that one can achieve in cybersecurity. Um, and, and it's really a, a badge of honor for those of us that have it. Um, but basically, I, I left the private world to go work specifically in K-12 uh, as a primary focus because the technical expertise that I had uh, was really lacking in K-12. And so it's been a passion of mine and a mission of mine. Um, for the last handful of years to, to really get in the trenches and try to help K-12 um, navigate this, this complex cybersecurity world because it, it does impact the physical safety as well and, and really the, the health and wellness of the kids. And Perry has done so many great sessions on that. Um, uh, half of these gray hairs were earned through cybersecurity. The other half were earned by uh, being the father of a teenager. So um, <laughs> I'm doing it longer than I want to admit. And I do apologize for the COVID hair, but they have uh, they have stopped us from, from going to the barber. So um, <laughs> just fiery passionate about this topic. And, and um, I really enjoy opportunities like this when I can just explain this stuff in regular human speak. Uh, we will touch a few technical things because there's no way to avoid it. Uh, but I'm going to try really hard here in this session to walk you through what, what you can do to, to secure probably the most critical piece of equipment that you have in your home um, that stands between you and the bad guys on the Internet. Great. So I'm going to go dark. I'll be here. Uh, but I want you to have the full screen and hopefully you'll be able to show us how to do this stuff because I'm not going to be able to take sufficient note. Yeah, absolutely. So I'm going to walk you through it. Um, so really what we need to start off with is what is a router? What is a Wi-Fi router? Some of you may know, uh, maybe you've heard the term before, but you're not familiar. So I have a couple of examples. Um, sometimes they look like this. Uh, so there's no antennas. It's just a square box. And on the back, you'll see, oh, get that right side up. You'll see we have our, our ports here. Uh, they look like oversized phone plugs. Uh, for those of you that are old enough to remember when phones had wires, uh, this looks like an oversized phone plug. That's where the LAN cable goes, or what we call the local area network cable. And again, it looks like that fat phone cable. This is connected up to your modem, which is where the internet comes into your house from the outside wire. So if you have cable internet, it'll come through your cable modem. If you have fiber optics, it'll come through your fiber optic modem. Uh, and if you're still using DSL, it might actually come through a, a phone line. Um, but once it gets through the modem, it goes into a device like this. And this device is called a router. And what this essentially does is it routes the internet traffic to your various devices, to your laptop, to your iPad, to your cell phone. Um, and this device also provides the wireless internet in your home. 
And so this is one example. Uh, you may have one that looks more like this. So this example has antennas on it. What both of these devices have in common is that they serve the same function, okay? And this is in your home. You may have this provided by a um, telecom or internet provider. So they may have given you the box uh, or you may have a separate box that you purchase yourself. The one thing that's gonna be true on all these boxes is somewhere there's gonna be a sticker. And this sticker is gonna have some information on it. It's gonna have a model number. Um, and I don't know, it's pretty tough to see, but if I maybe get it up close enough to the camera, uh, can't see it too clearly, but there is a model number. Um, I myself these days need, need my uh, cheaters to be able to see this. Uh, but if you look, there's a model number there. Same thing on this device. If you look on the bottom here, we have uh, model number information and serial number. We also have another sticker on this device that actually shows me uh, the wireless setup that came from CenturyLink. So I got this device from my provider and I purchased this device uh, from Micro Center. So what I'm gonna wanna do is I'm gonna wanna find that model number. And then I'm gonna go to my internet browser and I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen here for you guys. And I'm gonna actually walk you through the steps of setting this up and what you would do. So the first step you're gonna go to is your favorite search engine. Uh, in my case, that's gonna be Google. Now, the device I'm testing is uh, made by a company called Tenda. So I'm gonna Google the model number. So in this case, it's a Tenda N300. And then I'm gonna get a little pop-up here that shows me uh, where it says product. So if I go here, it's gonna take me to the product. Well, that's gonna show me some things, but that may or may not be exactly what I'm looking for. So here you can see, this, isn't, this doesn't match my router. Um, so I wanna check to make sure that it looks like what I'm looking for. It's very easy to make that mistake. So scrolling down, I see here that I'm not finding what I'm looking for. So what I add to this is the word download. Now download is usually gonna take me to the support page. And you see here, I have the Tenda website with the product and download. So I'm gonna go here. Now that I'm here, I see that I have these firmware files to download. Um, I'm gonna need that in just a little bit, but this still doesn't help me get to where I'm going. So I need to look down in the FAQs and I see how to set up my router. Okay, and depending on your specific manufacturer, depends on which guide you'll need to follow. Because I wanna keep this short for you guys, I'm gonna shortcut here right to the router's address. Now all routers have an address. Think of that like a phone number, okay? And you need to put that phone number in in order to connect to the router. So Ryan, you're not, you're, you're not giving away anything that people are gonna use to hack you, right? No, no, I set up a special lab environment just for this purpose because I, I didn't want uh, anyone getting my real information. Okay, good. But if you're not sure what this address is, a step you can take is to go here to the search bar, type in CMD, and that's going to bring up what we call the command prompt, okay? And in order to find out what the address is that you're connected to, you type in I-P-C-O-N-F-I-G. This stands for IP Configuration. So you type that in and hit enter. And now you can see that I am connected to 192.168.100.1. What you're looking for is that gateway address. That's the address you wanna type up here in the search bar. So again, you go to the command prompt down here, or sorry, the start bar, you type in CMD, which brings up a command prompt. In that command prompt, you type in I, P C O N F I G or IP config. Once you have your gateway address, type that into your browser. And now we're logged into the router. This is where we can start to look at things like, you know, do I have a connection to the internet? Looks like here I do. We can see things like how many devices are currently attached. 
we can see things uh, on the left here about different settings and configurations. And I'll go through that for you here in just a moment. Once we're in, the very first thing we want to do is make sure we have the latest firmware version. Now, firmware is the app that runs on your router device that allows you to communicate to the internet. So think of it as the app or software that runs on this that allows you to actually connect to the internet. And we want to make sure that's up to date. So here I see I've got one uh, version 12. 01.0129 and then multi. Going back to the manufacturer's download site, we see that they actually have an updated version. So we're going to want to download that version. And you can see here that this update fixes some bugs. That's a really descriptive way of saying they've probably addressed some security concerns. Uh, not all manufacturers do the best job in, in describing what they've done. Um, but here you can see there's also some, in, some instructions. So I'll download the file and I'll save that to my um, downloads folder. Now I'm not actually going to do the full upgrade because to do so would knock me offline here. Uh, but I am going to go back and show you where you would apply it. So in every router, there's going to be some type of administration or system setting tab. When you go to that tab, you'll notice there's some different things like, you know, setting up your login. Uh, you can ignore a lot of this WAN and LAN parameter stuff. This is just kind of technical stuff if you were doing something uh, more fancy with your network besides just connecting to the Internet. But the ones I want to draw your attention to here is remote web management. You want that to be disabled. And the reason you want that disabled is because this allows you to log into the router from anywhere in the internet. Uh, the bad guys a lot of times will exploit that as a way to get in and take over your home router. So make sure that's disabled. The other thing you want to look for is under device management, you see here where it says firmware upgrade. So this would be the place you would actually go uh, browse to that file that I just downloaded. Um, so going back here to this file that we downloaded, this is the place in the browser where we would, uh, where we would upgrade the firmware. Um, again, I'm not gonna do that because it would break things right now, but uh, when you do it, just make sure that you can have your internet interrupted for uh, about two to three minutes. Um, so definitely don't want to do this in the middle of uh, your kid's school day or do this in the middle of a video call with work because um, it will interrupt your internet for about two to three minutes. The other really important setting is to enable auto maintenance. And some manufacturers, this will also be uh, automatic updates. Um, and if you have that ability, you definitely want to turn that on because that's going to allow you not to have to go download this file and do all these steps. It'll just keep it automatically up to date. Most, excuse me, most routers, if they've been built within the last couple of years, will have that capability. It's just with some of the older routers um, that you're going to have to manually upgrade that firmware. So that, that is kind of the first most important step. Pardon me, I'm getting a little parched. Um, the next thing we're gonna look at here is our internet settings. So as you can see, it's pretty standard stuff. Um, this connection type, again, that's really a technical thing. Uh, most people, it's gonna be a dynamic IP. There's no need to really modify this. Uh, but your settings may have other additional um, options for how you can control internet. I think the, one, uh, the next one that's most important is around wireless. So, setting up the actual name of your Wi-Fi and password. And as you can see here, because this was an experiment, um, I set it up as a lab. Um, and the lab password uh, is right here. I've set that up. You can see that it's um, just lab password. I went with something really simple. This is uh, where you set these things up. I encourage you to pick a, a good password, um, something that's easy for you to remember. Um, but hard for somebody to guess. This does not represent a good password. This is an easy password. 
Uh, a good password would be something like Ryan showed me how to update the security on my router, all with spaces. That would be a better, a better password than this. Uh, but this is the spot where you're going to set that up. You can also turn the wireless on and off. Um, what I like to do and what I would do in the past with my kid is I would actually use the Wi-Fi password as a, as a good way of getting the dishes done in the garbage out. Um, so it, it does come in handy to know this stuff because in addition to being more secure, uh, it can actually help you get some chores done around the house. Here you see where it says Wi-Fi schedule. So I'm going to go ahead and enable that. This is where you can actually set up when the Wi-Fi will be on and off during the day. Again, this can be a really effective tool for making sure the kids aren't uh, online in the middle of the night if our house rules are that the kids should be in bed in the middle of the night and not on the internet. We can go in here and we can actually set up the time in which that Wi-Fi will be powered off. We can set what days uh, and what schedule. And again, depending on your manufacturer, you might have more options here uh, to control the, the time that it's on and off. Um, WPS, uh, this is kind of a technical thing. This is if you have a more modern router and you have a more modern um, laptop or, or iPad, uh, you can actually set up your wireless connection securely by just pushing the WPS button. I don't know if you guys can see it here, but I, there's a button on the front of this router that says WPS. And so if I just push that button, and then I push the WPS button on my device, the devices will automatically sync to the router and I don't have to do anything else. So that's what that's for. Um, same thing with wireless parameters here. This is something you don't need to really mess with. That's, that's getting a little more technical. Um, bandwidth isn't really that big of a deal. This is where you can throttle. So this could come in handy. Um, for example, if I had an Xbox on here and let's say I'm trying to uh, do some work and my my son's trying to play Xbox, I can actually limit the amount of internet that he's getting to his Xbox, leaving more available for me. So that's what bandwidth control is for, is to say this computer gets more or less uh, amount of internet or speed, if you would. Uh, wireless repeating, this, this is going to be a very technical thing. Um, if your router has it, it just simply means that if you were in a, a very large home, you might need more than one wireless device uh, to cover your whole house. This would be where you would set that up. If you're not comfortable or familiar, uh, there are some YouTube videos on how to do it. And if that still doesn't give you the comfort you need, I would definitely advise calling uh, like a geek squad or some other kind of technical support people to help with that. Probably the most important feature that we're going to look at today is the parental controls. And the parental controls allow for things like um, restricting websites. So this particular router does not have the most advanced parental control features. Um, there are routers that have way more specific uh, features um, in the parental controls. So if you're, you are in the market for a new router, you may want to think about that is, you know, how, how robust are the parental controls in this router um, before I make my purchase? And again, YouTube is going to serve to be a great resource for you. They have unboxing videos. They have uh, walkthrough guides on, on, you know, what the parental features are. Uh, but in this case, I want to set up that um, the access is only allowed um, from 11, 11 in the morning until nine at night. Sorry, nine at night, military time. So that would be 13, 14, I think that's 20. If I'm, wait, 11. I'm bad at this stuff. Um, you'll have to go get a 21. Is it's it 21? 21. Okay, yeah, it's, it's been a long time. Um, add, the num add the number to 12. There you go, that's a good tip. So uh, I'm going to set that up Monday through Friday uh, because I'm going to have different rules about how late they can be online on the weekend. Here I'm going to go to only permit specific websites. Now, again, uh, this, this particular router is really, really basic. Uh, this is, a, I think it was $30. Um, so it's a very inexpensive router. So it's going to be very limited in its features. So unfortunately, if you go with only permit, then you have to put in the websites. Uh, same thing if you say forbid, you'll actually have to specify the websites to be blocked. 
that could be a lot of hard work on you. Um, so I would advise you to think uh, about that as, as part of your purchasing or upgrading. If the router is going to be difficult for me to maintain that website list, I might want to spend the extra 20 bucks to get the, the next um, version up that has an automatic parental control filter that's updated by the manufacturer. But these are your basic settings that all routers are going to have. And they're going to be in different levels of um, advancement. Some are going to be very simple. Some are going to be very robust. Uh, but all of them will have a parental control feature. All of them will have the ability to um, update or upgrade uh, the firmware. Again, that's that software that runs on the device that allows it to connect to the internet. Um, and that's kind of your 10,000 foot overview um, of just basic router settings and, and um, what you can do in there. Um, there are a lot of other products I would encourage you to use in conjunction with a router uh, to really increase your security at home. Um, there are, you know, parental uh, um, uh, software. There's software that you can get that will help you to manage those internet connections and help you to manage uh, the safety on your child's device. Uh, but if you don't secure the router first, it might all be for not. So that's why it's so important to secure. And the last thing I'll say on, on that is if, if you do have an older device and you try to go do this and now you're just frustrated and it's not quite working the way you want, um, I would say consider getting a new device. Uh, they are much, much easier to manage. If that's not an option for you and you can find no help whatsoever on YouTube, I would encourage you to reach out to family and friends that work in the IT industry. They could potentially help you out. And if you can't find anyone there, um, you know, put it, put it out to Twitter, put it out to LinkedIn. Um, security people are among some of the most helpful people I've ever met. Uh, we want to help you be better at this. I, I guarantee you a, a plead for help on this. We'll, we'll get you some responses. And they can come to us at yes. uh, the Cyber Safety Group, which is the successor to the world's largest and oldest cyber safety organization. I'm getting some feedback. Um, so, you know, what's interesting. I'd love to do another session with you, Ryan, when you have a moment. I know you're busy, but it would be great to look at the parental control capabilities of a router slowly and carefully. Because if you have younger kids, limiting them to five sites, you know, PBS Kids, uh, National Geographic, the sites that you know are trustworthy is not a bad thing. Um, and as long as you're just dealing with a handful of those that are trustworthy. Now, we have a, a task force that's reviewing sites to determine how trustworthy they are and ages. And in fact, through my Cyber Safety India Foundation that I have in Bangalore, I have volunteers all over India that are looking for their own parental controls that address Indian values so that they don't have to have the same value as somebody from New York City or LA, they can come up with the sites that work for them. So uh, we're working with Art of Living and the Gurudev uh, uh, Ravi Shankar, we're working with IBM, we're working with uh, Rio, we're working with all kinds of great organizations to get them to help volunteers so we can start creating our own in uh, in India. So I really appreciate this. It seems so hard, um, but when you do it, it seemed pretty easy. And so when I have a problem, I'm going to call you. <laughs> Good. Please do, because, you know, it's right now it's more important than ever that we start practicing some of this at home. Um, you know, being work at home and school from home, um, I, I really believe in my heart of hearts that when this is all said and done and we get back to whatever the new normal looks like, um, we will have more remote work days and more remote school days. I think we're going to see less snow days uh, for those of us that live in the north. And so it's just really, really important to understand that there are a few basic things to do at home, just like locking your door, upgrading your router is just one of those simple steps that you can take to help keep your kids safe. I appreciate it. Um, Ryan's helping me as we create the standards for virtual classrooms and platforms to make sure that they are compliant, safe, private, and secure. Um, and if we can start teaching the companies like Zoom how to do it right 
in the first place. We won't have to worry about keeping our kids safe later. And last thing is reach out to your employer if you're working from home, if you're lucky enough to still have a job, and see if they will pay for an upgraded router um, and security. And you might have your tech team still working at your corporation um, and they can tell you if they have special things they want to put in place and special settings and you may be able to give them remote access for that. The one tip I hadn't known, Ryan, was I thought incredibly helpful, which limiting certain devices uh, uh, bandwidth so that if you're working from home and you've got three kids and they're all gaming, you being able to keep that video conference call going is going to be pretty hard. I didn't know that the router could help you do that. So that mm -hmm. was really important. And I know everyone is going to appreciate this. I promised it would only going to be 20 minutes and I lied because it's 24. But Ryan, you know how much I love you and how much I rely on you. And I know you care about kids. You care about integrity and you care about values and what's right. So I want you to stay well and stay safe Thank and I'll you. keep you busy. You too. And I'm looking forward to it and feel free to reach out to Perry or myself um, with any questions. Always happy to answer. Thank you so much. Love you. Thank you. Love you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.